Nothing But The Truth. Hello, I'm Raj Chengappa from India Today and your host for Nothing But The Truth. Every week, we will deal with key issues of concern and bring you perspectives and clarity as to why these matter to you and the one clear truth that emerges from it. On November 18th, on a clear day at the launch pad of ISRO, or the Indian Space Research Organization at Sri Harikota in Andhra Pradesh, history of sorts was made. A slim rocket, six meters tall, which was around two stories high, took off in a blaze of flame and gas and rose into the firmament. Very quickly, it reached a speed of Mach 5, which is five times the speed of sound, and an altitude that was around 89.5 kilometers. Now, just to give you a sense of how high that is, most commercial aircraft travel around 12, uh, 10 to 13 kilometers high. That's the altitude, the maximum altitude they go. This spacecraft went right up to 89.5 kilometers, which was as planned, and turned around and began its descent. Inside the mission control room, on giant computer screens that uh, looks uh, like out of a James Bond movie, the scientists were tracking its path. And it went perfectly as planned, the altitude as well as the speed that was there. And after it had exhausted its fuel, it turned down and splashed into the Bay of Bengal. And inside there was wild cheering in mission control. The rocket was called Vikram S and was named after the father of India's space program, Vikram Sarabhai. The mission itself was called Praram, which is a Hindi word for beginning. That is an apt word because this was the start of a new adventure in India's space program. ISRO has built giant rockets in the past, and in comparison, Vikram S is tiny. But the achievement is that it is the first time that a private company has built and launched a rocket into space. And the people that did it were two young IIT graduates, Pavan Chandana and Bharat Dhaka. Both Pavan and Bharat are in their early 30s. And after they completed their graduation from IIT, they joined ISRO and worked in the rocketry section and other allied activities. By 2018, they decided to leave ISRO and form their own company called Skyroot with an ambition to build rockets. They were inspired by the likes of Elon Musk, who had set up Tesla and built it, and then set up SpaceX. And his company was doing work with NASA that included launching satellites as well as sending astronauts up into space. They were also inspired by Jeff Bezos of Amazon, who set up Blue Origin, and Richard Branson, the owner of Virgin Airlines, who set up Virgin Galactic. Both Bezos and Branson believe in space tourism, and they have built rockets that could take people up to experience zero gravity and weightlessness, and both of them did that in their own spacecraft last year. After they set up their company in 2018 and began work on rocketry, COVID struck in 2020 and delayed their project by almost a year. When I went to meet them in 2021 in their Hyderabad-based office, they had these model rockets that were there, and I thought this would take much longer to build, but I was pleasantly surprised when, this November, they went ahead with the launch of the first privately built rocket for India. So why was their achievement so important? For that, we need to go back into a bit of history. For the past 50 years or so, Indian Space Research Organization, which dominated the Indian space scenario, has earned a name for itself. Despite being a public sector institution, it has outperformed many of the other public sector units and has brought both India pride and glory. ISRO has propelled India into the exclusive space club of over just a handful of nations that has the capability of building giant rockets that can lift heavy satellites that could do a, an array of jobs for us that includes communication, weather, remote sensing, and even military applications. ISRO has gone far beyond just building rockets and sending up satellites. It has also sent up orbiters to the moon, to Mars in 2013, and it is now having its most important program underway 
the Gaganyaan, which is to send up three astronauts into space for a week. The government-owned ISRO has done India proud and has made India self-reliant, but it had a monopoly over all kinds of space activity in the country. If India needed to be a world space power, urgent reform was needed to bring in private players, as had been done in the US and in other countries. So in May 2020, in the midst of the first wave of COVID, the Narendra Modi government announced radical reforms in the space sector. And what were these? It opened out all activities of space, including building rockets, building satellites, and launching them to private players. This was not there before. And the second thing they said was that the Indian Space Research Organization and all its facilities, its laboratories, launch pads, would be available for private players if they needed them. I spoke to Jitendra Singh, the Union Minister of State for Space and Atomic Energy, and he made it a point to attend the launch at Sri Harikota. He said he was delighted to see Victor, Vikram S go up, and he saw twin benefits in the policy that the Modi government had made to free up space for private players. Apart from bringing a whole lot of new players into the game, what really was encouraging, he said, was that over 100 startups had begun various efforts, including Skyroute, as we saw, to build spacecraft and make satellites. And he said, importantly, what it does is, with so many players in the game, it would make India globally competitive. I spoke to Pavan Chandana, who is the co-founder of Skyroute, and asked him what the experience was like when he was building the rocket. And he told me that initially he thought that policy was, would be the biggest challenge. But as it turned out, with the Modi government announcing that private players could enter into the field, that particular problem or hurdle seemed to have gone away. The other challenge for Skyroot, which Pavan told me, was technology. And as he put it, rocket science is rocket science. Though rockets have been, been built for over 60 to 70 years, it is still complex technology. And Skyroot was not satisfied with just building another rocket. They decided to bring in newer technology. And this included carbon fiber to make the rocket motor casing, which makes it lighter and stronger, as well as the all new 3D printing for its rocket casing and other parts that were there. These technologies are for the first time being tried out on a rocket in India, and that is through the credit of Vikram S. Pavan told me that he had tested the rocket among his own scientists and also got ISRO, a team from ISRO, to review all their processes and clear it. But on launch day, he was obviously nervous, and he said he was worried that something could go wrong, because as he put it, space is unforgiving. It requires more than 99.999 kind of precision. And if there's the slightest error, the entire four years of effort would come crashing down. Fortunately, on that day, everything went like clockwork. And as the rocket lift up, lifted off, Pavan told me that not only did he feel exhilarated, as it continued its journey, he felt as though that sunshine had broken through and there was wild cheering, not only of uh, his team, but all around him, and a lot of shake hands that was happening at Mission Control. The reason for their joy is also because normally first launches are problematic in space. The fact that they hit the bullseye on the first attempt that they did was highly encouraging. Skyroot is the forerunner for bigger things that will happen to the private players in Indian space. I spoke to Pavan Goenka, who's the chairperson of InSpace that facilitates all private rocket building launches and coordination with ISRO. And he told me that while Praram, the mission, was a baby step as compared to the giant rockets and other things that ISRO does, what it does demonstrate is that private players across the country are competent to build these complex systems. And that would be very, very encouraging for investors to come and put money, serious money, into the space business. Pavan Goenka also told me that 
out of the 101 startups that have come up across the country after the reform process was started in May 2020, almost 20 to 25 of them are at a very advanced stage of producing rockets or satellites. Among them, he had named Agnikul, the Chennai-based rocket company that had been set up recently. And it is now ready with Agniban, a rocket launcher that is likely to go up either next month or the next year. And both of these companies, both Skyroot, which sent up Vikram S and Agniban, have had very encouraging funding reaching them. Skyroot had, has collected in the past couple of years over rupees 500 crore, and Agnikul is around half of that, 250 crores or so. That's what they say. And in a lot of other companies, there are private players coming in, private investors coming in to put money into space. That is a major development because in the past, ISRO was the prime body that built these rockets and the government had to fund most of the rockets and satellites that ISRO built. I also spoke to S. Somnath, the chairperson of the Indian Space Research Organization, who was present when Vikram S was launched. He said the launch was symbolic of how the private players could succeed in the business. And he said that the reform process actually opened up two major streams for Indian space. One was the startup stream, which we saw Skyroot and other big, uh, smaller players coming into the business. And the other was the large players that had collaborated with ISRO in the past to build rockets and satellites. Over the years, ISRO had collaborated with a large number of private players. And currently, almost 50% of the various parts of the rockets and satellite systems are built by private players in India. To enable these big players to play an even bigger role in Indian space, the Indian government set up NSIL, or the New Space India Limited, a public sector undertaking, which will enter into joint ventures with these players so that they can not only build rockets and maybe later satellites and launch them. NSIL has recently signed up with a consortium of companies to build the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, or PSLV. In future, NSIL will also have similar consortium set up to build satellites, and that would be a major avenue for these big players that are there. Importantly, ISRO will play a major role in facilitating their entry into space. Earlier, these companies only built parts for ISRO. Now, ISRO will handhold them so that they can not only understand integration of the rocket or the satellites, as well as help them launch it, and over a period of time, they would build that competence to do it on their own. All these major developments, whether it is startups like Skyroot and others demonstrating their prowess, as well as the large players forming consortiums to build various spacecraft, as well as including satellites and rockets, would give a tremendous impetus to Indian space. Most importantly, the government was doing all the spending before, and now we would have a lot of private players come into the business. The estimated market, the world space market, is supposed to be $400 billion. And currently, India is doing barely $8 billion. So there is tremendous potential that is there. This does not mean that ISRO would be sidelined. In fact, ISRO would continue to be the main guiding source, as well as in terms of advanced technology, would do all the research to provide it. Its hands are already full. It has the Gaganyaan project in terms of the uh, uh, sending up three astronauts that's there. It's got missions to Mars, to the sun, and another one to the moon. There's plenty of research that it's doing. Apart from that, it still has heavy lift rockets that can take up big satellites, which it will continue to do, which it has been programmed to do, till the private players take charge. All these developments, whether it is the startups like Skyroot coming into production, or the other startups that are now almost ready, as well as the big players forming consortiums to build rockets and satellites, will result in a dramatic improvement in India's, in India's space prowess and will give it the push to become a world space power along with the big boys of space. Clearly, the sky is no more the limit. Thank you for listening to this episode of Nothing But The Truth. I look forward to having you with me next time. Nothing But The Truth.